Very good morning and thanks for joining us on our breakfast show this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Today is a very, very wonderful day. Today is the 10th of July 2024. We do hope that you woke up well with a good mood and ready to kick start this day uh, in a very good spirit. Today on the show, we'll be looking at misinformation and information disorder in violent conflicts. Uh, we'll be looking at um, a, a case study or a case in point will be the Okwama uh, community uh, where the dastardly act of uh, killing the soldiers was, t was done and what was the effect uh, later on, what is the situation right now and everything that we need to know. Uh, Tinubu creates Ministry of Livestock Development to stop farmers' headers clashes is another uh, topic we'll be looking at today and to see whether that was really necessary or if it is necessary, what else do we need to see in that ministry or we, we need to see that ministry do. Okay, we'll also be having our top trending issues uh, that we'll bring to you and we'll go to the newspapers and see what the headlines are. What is it that made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies this morning on Off the Press? That's what we're going to be doing. But right now, let's take the quote for today and set ourselves on a good footing. Today is your day to start fresh, to eat right, to train hard, to live healthy, to be proud. That's according to Bonnie Feister. Today is your day to start fresh, to eat right, to train hard, to live healthy, to be proud. That's our quote for today, and it's very, very apt. We sometimes they say that a good road is uh, is is worthy of being taken twice, and sometimes w that's what we do with our quotes. When we see that it's so relevant for you to remind you of uh, the needful, then we bring it back to you. We've used this before, but uh, um, there, I'm sure that there are a lot of people who are hearing it for the first time, and those who heard it before uh, know that it, it cannot be overemphasized. Uh, there is only one very, the most important day in your life. It's not the day that you were born. It's not even the day that you are going to die. It's not the day that you uh, had the best achievements in life or anything else. It's just today. Today is your best day. So it gives you the opportunity to start afresh. It gives you the opportunity to consolidate on what you've been doing. It gives you the opportunity to, to be a better version of you. Whatever you were yesterday, cannot be compared to what you are and can become today. So let's live our lives for the moment more than anything else. You can't dwell in the past. You can't fear the future you have today. Why not make use of the present just like uh, the word it is? It's a present that has been given to you, so you make the best use of it. You're not even, you're not even sure of the next moment. So in that moment that you find yourself, you need to make the best use of that moment. Uh, if it is exercise you need, you exercise. If it is to start afresh, you start afresh. If it is to whatever you're going to do, if it is to take care of your health, if it's to eat healthy, everything you need to do, you have the opportunity to do it today. Don't leave for tomorrow what you can finish today. And don't dwell in the past uh, for things that you cannot change or things that you have already changed because today is your most important day. Let's make it count. Okay, so... That's it for the quote for today. We'll go straight to our top trending issues, uh, the issues that caught our attention in the last 24 hours. We do hope that um, uh, the traffic report in your, in your area is so, so favorable that you can get out, you can go to where you look for your gari, as we say, to put on your table uh, so that uh, today will not be ruined by rain or any other thing that uh, we did not expect. 
So the first top trending is that armed hoodlums have been reported at the Emir's Palace in Rano Town, Kano State, since Sunday, causing concern among residents. The presence of the armed individuals is seen as a threat to the security of lives and property. The motives of these armed youths are unknown, adding to the anxiety in the community. A letter addressed to the State Police Commissioner noted that the intrusions disrespect uh, to a recent police ban on non-state security actors, including vigilantes and hunters, from providing security services. The Rano Emirate, known for its peacefulness, is has been tense due to recent tussle over the dissolution of four additional emirates established by the previous administration. Residents have restrained their emotions, respecting the court's order and conducting only peaceful demonstrations. Okay, it, it's worrisome non, when non-state actors are bold enough to take up arms, or maybe illegally, because uh, if they are not the people that are recognized by government, whether vigilantes or hunters or anything, that's recognized by, by government, and they're just calling them armed hoodlums or bandits or whatever name they're calling them. So long as they're armed, so long as they, they're still speculating what kind of group they might be, and there's still fear, then there's a question to be asked. If the police had given restrictions of movement or anything, uh, and I've, I've told the people to be peace-loving, uh, it means that if you go against that, there might be implications. But these people are not afraid of those implications. So I wonder what is emboldening these people. Um, we, we need to start addressing these issues so that um, we don't take the laws into our hands. We don't, we don't degenerate into the kind of chaos that we may not be able to, to uh, hold. Kano State is volatile. Kano State is... Is, it, is tense right now because of this tussle and we hope that there will be peace in that in that state and every other state where there is some kind of conflict whether it is the emirate tussle or just a chief tenancy tussle or whether it is political tussle as we are finding in um, in river state or anything let there be peace in nigeria that's all we pray for and like the police said yesterday um, and they have always been saying and everybody who is a security conscious person has been saying security is our collective responsibility so whether you're a citizen or a security agent you can have something to do to make sure that security returns to our land uh, just the plea that I always give or we always uh, give is that they, uh, the security agencies should make themselves so friendly that people will volunteer information. Let the police really be our friends so that whenever we see something, no matter how, how bad that kind of a thing is, we can report to them knowing that our identities will be protected and then knowing that they are going to investigate and not implicate us, the people who volunteered the information. Because most times, that's the reason people don't, um, don't uh, volunteer information. If I, if I overhear somebody maybe planning uh, evil, and then I report to the police, the first thing is, I'm the first suspect. How did you manage to hear that? And then we might end up, if they don't get those people, if that crime is committed, if they don't get those people, I might end up being the, the fall guy. That's what uh, the average Nigerian thinks all the time when it comes to security. So let security agencies be our darlings so that we can always volunteer the information and have these hoodlums arrested and prosecuted. And another thing is the prosecution aspect of it. So whoever is uh, at fault, whoever perpetrates any evil should be prosecuted and let people know that there is consequence or there are consequences for bad behavior. Otherwise, we'll still be where we are for a very long time. The second thing is um, the House of Representatives has uh, urged the federal government to suspend the Samoa Agreement's implementation due to an alleged lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transge transgender clause. The House directed its Committee on National Planning to investigate the agreement within four weeks and report back for further legislative action. This decision followed a motion of urgent public importance brought, to, brought by Deputy Minority Leader Aliyu Madaki and, seven, and 87 others during Tuesday's plenary. The Samoa Agreement is the legal framework for the European Union's relations with 79 countries, including 48 African 
16 Caribbean and 15 Pacific countries. Last week, a national daily alleged that the agreement contained a clause to legalize same-sex relationships in Nigeria, a claim the federal government denied, citing existing legislation against same-sex relationship and threatening legal action against the media house. Father worried that the signing of such an agreement with the aforementioned clauses, if true, violate our sovereignty and is a clear contravention of Section 12.1 of 99 Constitution as amended. Where the federal government is going into an agreement, by the provisions of Section 12 of the Constitution, the Parliament ought to be carried along. And if the parliament had been carried along, these arguments, even from our people that we speak for, would not have been there, because Nigerians would have been better informed. The problem is that of lack of information. And as a parliament, all we are saying is that we want to be satisfied that what the executive has told Nigerians is actually the true position of the facts. In fact, three ministers have come out, including information, budget and planning, in public to say there was nothing like that in the agreement. Go and Google your media. You will see the agreement, you will see it there. That it was never mentioned, it was never discussed. There is nothing like lesbian rights or gay rights. It is about human rights, environmental protection, and trade agreements. Period. Um, the first amendment, Mr. Speaker, is the need for Nigerian government to unsign and to withdraw from the unpopular Samoa agreement, and the need for the government to refrain from engaging in any such treaties that contravene the people's culture, religion, and unethical morals. Well, it's unfortunate that it came to a point where um, the legislature will be complaining that they were not being carried along. Uh, but uh, we've seen the uh, we've seen that the this an agreement that the document contains um, gender equality, gender rights. Uh, so when you begin to talk about this, then it's as if um, uh, we don't know what we're we're doing. If we have a law in Nigeria that is against same-sex marriage or relationship or those kind of gender rights that uh, we're talking about and then we go out and sign an agreement an agreement that includes something that can be exploited by law uh, to bring that to the fore uh, then we should be very careful about it it's like signing off our our life we're signing off our constitution and saying it doesn't matter uh, what is in our constitution we are going to sign this because if our constitution is against a particular thing and there is an agreement that contains that thing or contains something that can lead to the thing that is in our constitution that we should never do then it's as if we are saying whatever it is we we will give up what is in our constitution before we sign this otherwise you will see that you don't need to sign it you don't have to sign it you will not you should not sign it because Whatever is in your constitution does not agree with what is in that document. You cannot go and sign it and bring it back home if it is money. And that money is supposed to come to you if you agree to a particular thing. You sign it and then when you come, you're like, okay, I've entered Nigeria. When they come here, our laws are different. It doesn't really make sense to me. I don't know. Maybe it makes sense to the law. You have a constitution and they say this constitution says one, two, three things. And then you go out, instead of you saying that, oh, this does not agree with our constitution, you say, okay, I can sign it. And then when I bring it home, um, because our constitution kicks against it, we're, we're not going to do it. So like the, the House of Assembly has, um, or the National Assembly has proposed, let that bill be studied very well. Let that agreement, rather, that document be studied very well. And it's unfortunate they were not carried along when they were supposed to be carried along. If things like this are being signed, a lot of people, the stakeholders should be in the know. And the National Assembly, what better place to go to to ask their opinion? So if that document is studied, um, the argument of one of the lawmakers was that it was never spelled out uh, gay rights and all that. But if there is a clause that can be exploited, then it should be struck out and we should not enter into that agreement because what I see uh, is not something that we will like maybe in the ten, next 10 years or 15 years. Because if you collect somebody's uh, money, 
you are supposed to do whatever is in the agreement, no matter what you, laws you have in your own house. It doesn't matter. But that's an argument of a layman, so let, let the lawyers do what they need to do. Now, the House of Representatives passed a bill to create 74 special seats for women in Nigeria's federal parliament. Sponsored by Deputy Speaker Benjamin Kalu and 12 others, it aims to amend the 1999 Constitution to include one special seat for women in the Senate and House of Representatives for each state and the federal capital territory. The bill also proposes three special seats for women in state houses of assembly. Co-sponsor Joshua Ghana emphasized the bill's importance in addressing women's under-representation in legislative bodies. He noted that women made up only a small percentage of the Senate and House of Representatives in recent assemblies, stressing the need for equitable representation and citing international examples where affirmative actions have uh, improved gender equality. Supporters believe the bill will enhance women's participation in politics Akin Rotimi noted broad consensus for more women representation, while Kingsley Chinda and Kelechi Nwogu emphasized the need for deliberate efforts to address the issue. They argued that increased representation is crucial for legislative and national development. Some members opposed the bill, suggesting alternative measures. Gali Tijani proposed improving party mechanism for women's involvement rather than reserving seats. Olami Juwonlo Alawa Kala, Patrick Umo, and Billy Osawaru argued it conflicted with the Constitution. A similar bill in the Ninth Assembly did not pass. Uh, well, th there's only so much you can talk about this uh, kind of development and not sound like you are partial. You are, you are just, um, I don't know the names to, to use. But I have, as a person, I'm talking for myself, I'm not talking for even Plus TV, I'm talking for just myself. As a person, I do not ever think that reserving seats is the way to go. For instance, if you go into the banking sector, nobody reserved any seat, but you find out the MDs of a lot of the very, very strong banks in Nigeria are women. They didn't have to res reserve a seat. You write YAC, nobody reserves question papers for, for, for women. You do every other thing, everybody, you get into the university, the cutoff point for women is not different from the men, and women are still doing exceptionally well. So if the women are not doing well in politics, the fundamental issue for me is not because they are not given seats. In fact, for me, I think if they are given seats, it will even make them... Um, uh, it will even make them less ambitious, more, more, more or less. You know, you're going to the National Assembly. A senatorial district may have all their best contestants to be men. But since there is a law that a woman has to come from one of the senatorial districts, you have to select which senatorial district has to be a woman. And then you start fishing for a woman that will do the work that qualified men could have done. If a woman needs to be in politics. I think she should be strong enough to withstand politics. You can't say there is a truck of cement uh, that is in the community and people need to offload this cement and then you tell the men uh, that okay for every 100 bags that you you offload we are going to keep uh, uh, three or four or five out of that and give to the women and pay the women because they are the weaker vessel. If they cannot offload the, the cement, they should look for another thing that they can do. As simple as that. It's not because they are women. In other climes, they were not reserved places. The women contested. Our Nigerian people who have been contesting in the UK and women, they are winning elections in the UK. It is not because they reserved a seat for them. It's because they were strong, they were resilient, they were, they were good enough to be in that office. So if a woman is good enough, a woman is strong enough to withstand the politics of Nigeria, then fine. I know that political parties have reduced prices of forms for women. They have done a lot of things to encourage women to go into politics, but the women would rather not go into politics. So if they want to play a different role in the political space, then so be it. Like I said, I'm talking for myself, so if you're, you're raining abuses, or you're raining curses or anything, it's on me. I don't think 
keeping special seats for women is the way to go. In every other sector where women and men are given the equal uh, playing ground, women have done exceptionally well. I used the banking sector earlier on, and we've seen how women have done in that sector. They didn't need to be given a special place. So we already have women leader in parties. There's no men leader. We already have Minister of Women Affairs. We don't have a, the one of men affairs. We already have so many other things that we have said women can do. And, and we should be talking about affirmative actions possibly in, in appointments, in ministerial appointments or some other things that the people are chosen. But if the people have to speak, let the people speak for whoever they think is strong enough to to represent them. That's my take, personal take. But if they feel that um, affirmative actions, you handpick women, whether they're, because in some cases you find out that some people are not qualified. It's just like sometimes when it comes to zoning, uh, you find very, very qualified people in other zones, but in this zone that's, that is supposed to take their turn, that is the, is the Miloko, <laughs> I don't know how to say it in, in, in Yoruba, but it's there is their turn and because it's their turn i'm not referring to the president that's not what i'm saying even though he used that but i'm not referring to him but when it comes to zoning and it comes to that particular uh, space it may not be um the national uh, national space uh, because every zone will have somebody who will be qualified but when you come down to maybe like councillors or at a particular time there are always people who are stronger than others and you find out that it is not your turn. You have to wait for your turn. And then the person who has no idea whatsoever what is going on will just take the mantle and sometimes just mess up. So I don't think, I don't think, I don't, as a person, I don't think just keeping seats for women, whether they, it, because it sounds like whether they do something or not, they work or not, it's just their right. Let them go and take it. I, I don't think so. I will not train my children to believe that because they are women, they have to be given handed, you know, it's like handout. They have to be given handouts all the time uh, because they are women. They cannot compete with men. For what? They can't compete with men. So for the things that we know that women cannot do, let them stay. The things that we know they can do, let them stay. That is equity, not equality. It's equity. It's not equality, if you know what that means. Okay. Well, that's me. We'll take a short break and look at the weather. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers with uh, Mr. Tunde Kolawole, hopefully. Stay with us. <laughs>